Legacy, legacy, legacy. I've had a dream. Most of the, most of us, most of us, when we have, when we hear this, automatically off of the top, Amen. Is there's no doubt about what this, where this leads us to, who we are talking about here, Amen. And it would be Dr. King, Amen. Our Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Amen. One of our great leaders, one of our great leaders, amen, he was, and, and we can go on to say that he was, amen, as he is a household name, he has become an American icon um, as a whole, so I thank God, I thank God for the time that Dr. King had here on this earth, I thank God for the work that he has done, amen, in, in his civil rights fight amen not just he himself but him being a leader had those who followed him amen because they believed in something I don't believe that Dr. King just came out of nowhere I believe that he was a godsend amen I, I believe as well that Dr. King was a would be a modern day prophet amen I, I truly believe that because uh, Dr. King himself spake of speak of the better days ahead for God's people. Yeah. Amen. He he was not he was not selfish in talking about the great things that he himself would achieve. Amen. But he spake of what Almighty God gave him to speak about. Amen. Amen. And so I thank God this evening that he he listened. He had an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. And though though earlier though earlier my opening remarks were on old Slewfoot, though he may have been beat down, Amen. Doctor King in many marches that he led was beaten, and the dogs, the very dogs that some of us have had for pets, were the very dogs breeds that were sicked on him, Amen, by the police, Amen. And these dogs, we have these dogs now for, we have them as pets. And, I, and, I, and the reason why I brought up the dog part is because I, I've had one in the last couple of years. And a, and a brother came to me, he said, he said, man, that's the same dog that, that the police used to sick on you. You know, and it never fazed me because I looked past, I looked past that. I looked past that and when, I, when we had the dog, hey man, she was a, she was just a puppy. She was, she was a loving and caring puppy, though she had her issues. Um, but she was just a loving and caring puppy. But, but when, we look at, when we look at the true nature of stereotyping, amen, we, amen, as a people, as a people have been stereotyped as well. Amen. We as a people have been stereotyped as well. And so when, when Dr. King was doing all that he was doing and, and bringing about changes, whether directly or indirectly, he was bringing about changes in our lives, and we are experiencing it now, we are experiencing it now, um, we, we, Lord have mercy, we have to be able to get over the ask the, 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 the blessing of being black. Amen. It, we have to get over, we have to get over the, the, the blessing of being black. It does my heart no good when I hear a child say, I don't, I don't like the color of my skin because she's black. Amen. It, it does my heart no good for that. And I try everything that I know to try to instill in her or him, whomsoever it is at that particular time, but I've experienced it with, with, the, with the girl, amen, where her not liking who she is, not liking who she is. I'm like, Lord, you know, it, it doesn't do my heart good. So, so I pray, I pray, and I give encouragement. It's a blessing. 
to be black. Amen. It's a blessing to be white. It's a blessing to be in the skin that you're in with Almighty God using you. Amen. Amen. When Dr. When Dr. King, when Dr. King was going about on his destiny that was placed before him, he went about with equality, and these equalities entailed equal rights uh, for not just the black man as well as the black woman. Amen. Because the black woman, I believe, was, was, was God, was, was subjected to so much, so, so, so many unthinkable things. Amen. And, and Pastor, I heard, I heard you break it down. Amen. Uh, with the American Indians as well as the, the, the Jews and, 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 and then the blacks. Amen. As well as the um, Europeans, they've had their struggles as well. Uh, but it's just that ours have been a little more prevalent. Amen. Down through the years, it has even the bad part about it is that we're having to still deal with it. You know, and I heard you, I heard you, Pastor, when you shared on, when you were talking about our black president that we have today, which is supposed to be the president of the America, amen, of the great United States of America. He's supposed to be our commander in chief. He's supposed to be our leader when in fact he has those that sit beside him would love to take a knife and stab him in his back at the first opportunity. This is the truth. Amen. You can see it. You see it on television. And they have no shame about what they're doing. Nor have they had any shame about what they have done. Lord have mercy. Mm. But we thank God. For some reason, for some reason, we are able to overcome. We've been able down through the years to persevere. We have been able to hold on to Almighty God's hand. Amen. And keep pressing on in spite of what has been thrown before us. So many, so many stumbling blocks have been thrown before us so that we could not achieve the American dream. You have folks that come over here from, from different lands. Amen. They come here from different lands and the opportunity are given to them. When we go and we ask for help, we go and we ask for help. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you from self-experience and the things that God has allowed me to experience in these last few years, these last few years, been here for some time. I know that there's been folks that have come here and have made leaps and bounds. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, that my brother, that my Hispanic brother or whomsoever he is, but at this time, it just falls in his lap. It falls in his lap this evening. He's come here and he has made leaps and bounds, and I find myself having to go to him to get something. Because I've gone to the banks, these banks that I've dealt with for years, and have gotten turned down. No, because your credit score ain't where it's supposed to be. No, not that you've never been late on any payment in the last 15 years. No, because your credit score ain't where it's supposed to be. Equal rights. We're talking about equal rights. However, however, here's, here is my brother that comes from across the water. He comes in. He comes in and he says, well, I need a loan because I want to open a business. Okay, how much do you need? Don't know anything about a credit score. Credit scores never come into play. Amen. These are some of the things that Dr. King was fighting for. Amen. Equal rights, equal rights. We, we still are fighting for equal rights as of today. We're still fighting for them. We're still fighting for them. Equal rights for the man, the black man, the black woman. Equal rights for the black man as well as the white man. Dr. King was not prejudiced. Not in any way. No, no, not, not by any means. Contrary to popular belief. 
Amen. He was not prejudiced. And he was also nonviolent. No, he didn't believe he didn't believe that violence would get anything done. What it would cause would be retaliation. Amen. And and innocent folks would get hurt as a direct result of violence. Amen. However, there have been those who for whatever reason see it differently and see that violence would be a way to get their feelings feeling better. Amen. They'd feel better about themselves. However, again, Dr. King was not a violent man. He was a loving and caring father. He was a loving and caring leader. He was a man of God. Dr. King, as he fought for equal rights, these equal rights would allow us to be able to go into the restaurants and sit down at the same table uh, or in the same dining room as our equal of European brothers, uh, equal parts, amen, uh, uh, and, and this would allow us to be able to go into the same libraries sharing the same books as our European brothers, and I say that the, this, our European brothers, at this point, it, it, the, here it is, it lands in your lap today. Amen. We're talking about the white man because it was at that time this fight and the struggle was with. It lands in their laps. Amen. It lands in their laps. It became, it became a white and a black thing. Amen. We would be pulling the wool over our head again if we said that it wasn't. We would be pulling the wool over our heads if we said that it wasn't. God would not have you deceived. He would not have us ignorant in any way. So, so as Dr. King was fighting for these equal rights, for us to sit in the same dining room and to eat the same foods off of the same plates, off of the same forks, amen, he also fought for these rights for us to be able to go into the libraries and have same access to the better books, amen, that was offered to our equal, to, to our white brothers, amen, as well as being able to share the same bathrooms, amen, as our white brothers, to be able to share the same hospitals and have the same equal care as our white brothers and sisters. God, Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King, as he fought, as he fought this struggle, he did it, he did it not with a bitter heart. It was not done with a bitter heart. It was done with the unctioning, I truly believe, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because if he was a modern day prophet, God would not have been able to use him if he had done it with a bitter heart. However, we know that all my, that, that, that Dr. King did not do it with a bitter heart. He done it, he did it with a loving and a caring heart. He did it with a loving and a caring heart. And the legacy, the legacy that he has left here is living on even today. Even today. He's being acknowledged. He's being acknowledged by his greatness. He, we have a president. I truly believe that uh, our president, uh, Barack Obama, um, um, as he's following in the footsteps, and I truly say that he's following in Dr. King's footsteps because him being... Him being a black president, not so much that he's a black president, he's a black man that is a president. He's a president. Whether he was black or whether he was white, amen, he's the president. Amen. And we as Christians, amen, we as evangelicals, amen, we have a responsibility to show him the same amount of respect as we would whether he was a white man. It doesn't make a difference in the color of his skin. It doesn't make the difference. God has no respect to person. He has no respect to person, so God does not care. God has always, down through the years, picked great kings. He's always picked great, great kings for his people. He has always picked great leaders 
for his people. So, so as, we, as we see the legacy that Dr. King has left, and, 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 and our president now, following in the footsteps of Dr. King, is living the legacy. We are living we are living the legacy of Dr. King because we can today, we can today go into the restaurant, the same restaurants that our equal counterparts, amen, go into and sit down and order a decent meal and don't have to go in through the back door. We can share the same bathrooms, amen. We, we don't have to go into the little dirtier bathroom on the other side anymore. I, I worked down at Learners, down on the corner of King and Washington Street, and, 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 and back in, I guess it was in the, oh, it would have been 1989, I would say, I experienced, I had never seen it because I was brought up in Alexandria, I never experienced uh, or seen physical um, writings that actually literally divided the two people. And there was a middle level on that, in that learner's uh, building there. And one day, one day, being a little, you know, just, just wanting to wonder and see what was going on, I went to this particular floor, and sure enough, sure enough, there it was, still there, whites and blacks. These bathrooms were still in place in 1989. They were still there. They were still there. Not that they were publicly accessed, amen, because the elevators, you, you had to have a code to get into different floors, but you would have thought that these types of things would have been taken away. But they were not. They're still there. Somebody wants to feel their oats. Somebody wants to feel their oats. They still want to feel their oats. And I don't believe that I saw that by mistake. I don't believe I saw that by mistake. No, because then today I would not be able to give that testimony. And I can tell you today that it did not feel good by seeing that. It didn't feel good. So I can imagine, I can imagine, I can imagine all that my ancestors had to endure. And I'm just seeing this. They lived it. Amen. They literally lived it. Amen. Amen. And I, and you know, and, and I know my mother would go and she would clean the houses of these rich white folks, you know, and she'd come home and her knees would be hurting and her feet hurting and whatsoever, you know, and I would rub her feet for her sometime. And I can remember that she would say that she had been working hard, but she didn't give up because, because there was something that she wanted for us. Amen. And I would always know that any time Dr. King would come on the television, we would be sitting around and we would see what was taking place now, how this man of God was going to lead God's people into the promised land. Hallelujah. Mm. How he was going to lead us out of this uh, oppression state that these that our folks had been in for so long and so I thank God that he has moved in such a mighty and miraculous way to bring us through and to bring us to where we are today we have the ability our children our children can go to the same schools and get the same education it's up to them now it's no longer amen it's no longer it's no longer that you cannot do this or you cannot do that. Amen. The sky is no longer the limit. The sky is no longer the limit. If our children want to achieve some positive things in life, they can achieve them. If they want to be president, guess what? The color of your skin no longer can hold you back. It only holds you back if you allow it to. It only holds us back if we allow it to, no longer can we use this excuse. For so many years it has been uh, such a great excuse. It's because of the color of my skin for me to be laxidated and not want to do anything. It's because of the color of my skin that I can't get this job. It's the color of my skin. No, 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 no. No longer, no longer, 
No longer can we use that crutch. No longer will Almighty God allow us to use that crutch. Amen? No longer, no longer, no longer, no longer. My, my, and Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost. Legacy. The legacy that Dr. King has left us is one that even the children even today are able to stand on are going to have to stand on. They're going to have to stand on. They no longer no longer can go with what uh, granddaddy said or, or, or my daddy said or what my mama said uh, because we are on welfare. Amen. No longer using welfare as a crutch. No longer that old cloak that was pulled over our eyes in the eyes of our ancestors, no longer are we going to allow that cloak to be pulled over our eyes anymore. Amen. We thank God that the cloak has been removed. The cloak has been removed. In Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah 29, 11, God tells us that I know the thoughts that I have for you. Amen. He says, I know the thoughts that I have for you. And, and Dr. King, I, I know that Dr. King would have, would have had to have heard these same words. He said, thoughts, the, the thoughts that I have for you are not thoughts of evil, but they are thoughts of loving and caring for you. That you are going to achieve some things in life. Yes, yes, you will have a legacy when you leave here. Amen. You will have a legacy when you leave here because you are following what I am telling you. So I can hear Almighty God. I can hear God and I can hear Dr. King right now. Amen. So I understand when he said that I've been to the mountaintop. I understand when he said that I've seen I've seen some things, amen, because we as ourselves, as children of the Most High God, amen, we know that God has no respect a person, and God has showed us some things that he has in store for us, amen, and so we will press on, we will persevere, we will overcome, we will overcome, we will overcome. No longer, no longer, no longer will we be dragging our feet. No longer do we want to be in the back, in the back, way back in the crowd. This day, this day, we are moving to the front. Amen. We are leaders. Our children, our children are going to become governors. Our children are going to become lawyers. Our children are going to become these great doctors. Our children are going to become presidents. Our children are going to become congressmen and congresswomen. Our children are going to be the president of the United States. This is our legacy. This is our legacy. This is our legacy. The Word of God tells us, the Word of God tells us that a wise man leaves an inheritance, inheritance for his children's children. And it ain't talking about money. Because if it was the money, we would have lost out a long time ago. There was something that our ancestors gave us that, 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 that they put into us. Amen. There was something that's down in our souls that has caused us to press on, that has caused us not to give up, that has caused us not to throw in the towel, that has caused us to persevere. It has caused us, it has caused us to want to leave a legacy for our children. Amen. Amen. And so I thank God, I thank God for this afternoon. I thank God for his Holy Spirit because if it wasn't for his Holy Spirit, I know that we would be lost a long time ago. Amen? Amen. Thank you. I thank you, Pastor. Thank you for your time. Mother, thank you for your time. Sister, brother, God bless you. Go, oh, Pastor. It's all right. The legacy. The legacy lives on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoa.